and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if it is your first time here for today's bookish video I'm going to be doing a mini book haul and I've been pretty good about not buying books um, on a mass scale I think I did my last book haul in February and I've kind of picked up books here and there I haven't done any major book buying um, but I haven't limited myself if I've seen something that I want I've just picked it up. So I'm just going to share my latest purchases with you so let's just jump straight in. So the first book in my haul is my most recent purchase and that is American Gods by Neil Gaiman. This is a fantasy meets sci-fi novel about a man called Shadow who takes a job working for a mysterious character called Mr. Wednesday after the death of his wife and I am really embarrassed I suppose to say that I've never read a Neil Gaiman book ever and I know that um, Molly from Molly Reads really likes Neil Gaiman books and I know that Molly and I think Jordan from Joe Bookish have just finished reading American Gods so having listened to them talk about it and how, say how much they really enjoyed it I decided that this was going to be my first Neil Gaiman book and actually it's huge. So when I'm going to read it, I don't know, but I now own my first Neil Gaiman and um, I'm going to read it at some point. Then at the same time, I also picked up A Court of Wings and Ruin by Sarah J Mass. This is the third book and the latest release in this particular series. And I haven't read the first two, but I kind of decided that I was going to bulk read them all. And from what I can understand, this is an adult fantasy series, which is based on Beauty and the Beast very loosely and I know that some people have had real problems with this series but some people have also loved it so I am just going to binge read one two and three this summer um so when I saw it I thought I'll just pick it up and then I've got it and then when I decide that I want to go for it I have all three books ready to go. Next we have Orphan X by Greg Hurwitz. This is a mystery thriller about a man who was trained as an assassin as part of an off the books program called the Orphan Program and he broke away from that program and began to help people who had nowhere else to turn but now somebody has picked up his trail, somebody who also was trained on the Orphan Program and um, that's all I know and I'm very very excited about this and actually I picked this up in a secondhand bookstore and it hasn't it doesn't even look like it's been read but I've heard very good things about this and it almost has a Jason Bourne-esque vibe to me so I'm really looking forward to reading this. Next up we have Larkswood by Valerie Mendez. This is a family gothic drama which spans three generations of the Hamilton family and is all based around the family home of Larkswood and I don't know anything else about it apart from that but I thought that it sounded really really interesting. I love family dramas. I love particularly dramas which um, jump backwards and forwards between different time periods. It felt very much like Kate Morton's books to me, um, although probably half the size of Kate Morton's books, so I thought that I would give this one a whirl. Next up I picked up The Cuckoo's Calling by Robert Galbraith. This is obviously JK Rowling writing under the pseudonym of Robert Galbraith. This is her crime fiction series about a detective called Cormoran Strike and I have wanted to read these books for absolutely ages and I spotted this one in a second hand bookshop and it is in near perfect condition so um, I just figured that I would pick this one up and give it a go. Then we have The Woman in Cabin 10 by Ruth Ware. This is a thriller book about a journalist who is aboard a cruise ship and she believes that she sees a woman's body being thrown overboard but when she reports it she's told that every single passenger or every single person aboard the ship is accounted for. Um, and I've heard um, mixed things about this. I know that Julie from A Girl in a Book really disliked it. Um, and I read Ruth Ware's debut novel In a Dark Dark Wood last year and I think I gave it about three stars. It was a predictable thriller, I think is a kind way to talk about it. It was a super fast read um, but it was fairly obvious where the story was going. Um, but I wanted to give Ruth Ware the benefit of the doubt so I have picked this one up and again it's not massive so I think it's going to be a really fast read um, and I'll probably pick this up when I just... I've got, I think it's the kind of book that I'm going to have to be in the mood to pick up, um, but I did want to give it a go. But next we have Crisis by Frank Gardner, and this is about an ex 
Commando, who is sent into the Colombian jungle to investigate the suspicious death of a British intelligence officer and when he gets there he realises that he is part of a much bigger um, conspiracy or plot and the story kind of unfolds from there and I picked this up in the supermarket it was very very much a quick read of the blurb this sounds really interesting type of buy don't know much more about it don't think I need to know much more about it than that um, but I am really looking forward to this and this is I believe Frank Gardner's debut novel so again really excited to try this one. Then we have The Passenger by Lisa Lutz. This is again a psychological thriller about a woman who leaves the body of her husband at the base of the stairs in their family home and goes on the run and she takes up a new identity and she meets a female bartender who offers her somewhere to stay but there is obviously a secret that is racing to catch up with this woman and um, that's pretty much all I know. Next up we have The Gravity of Birds by Tracy Guzman. This has got very shiny gold writing on the front and it's very beautiful but I don't know if you can see that in the light. Um, this is historical fiction about two sisters and a painting and when an art history professor is asked to sell a painting of the two sisters but he has to get in touch with the sisters before he can sell the painting. He discovers that the sisters have both vanished and so he begins to uncover this kind of mystery, uh, twisted story about one summer when the painting was done. Um, so again, don't know much more than that. Thought that it sounded really interesting. It's got some really interesting um, recommendations from authors that I know on the back so I'm just really looking forward to reading this one. Back into the category of thrillers now we have The Widow by Fiona Barton. This is a psychological thriller about a woman whose husband had committed some kind of crime and she chose to stay with him then her husband dies and people begin asking the widow to tell her story and her side of events. Um, but is she telling the truth or is she telling a version of the truth that she wants everybody to hear? I don't know. We'll see. It says on the front, a loving husband or a heartless killer, she'd know, wouldn't she? Then we have Before I Go to Sleep by S.J. Watson. This is a story about a woman who loses her memories every time she goes to sleep. And it's a psychological thriller and um, Julie from A Girl and a Book really, really rated this book. Um, don't know much more about it than that don't want to know much more about it than that, think that it sounds really interesting. Next we have His Bloody Project by Graham McRae Burnett. This was a Man Booker Prize nominee last year and it's about a triple murder which takes place in a Scottish uh, farming community and it seems very obvious who has committed the crime but this book kind of takes a look at the motives behind the murder and the sanity of the person who committed the murder. But the thing that really intrigued me about this book is the way that it's told because you have um, like court manuscripts and evidence that was inserted into the trial. So it's not just a standard story about these murders that were committed. So I'm really interested actually to... Um, see what it's like to actually read a book that's written that way. Next up we have Seas of Snow by Carenza Jennings. This book was sent to me by the author for review um, and I'm going to be reading it this month hopefully. And this is set during the 1950s and it's a psychological drama about a young girl who experiences abuse at the hands of her uncle and I believe that the mother experiences abuse as well. So I'm just going to read the inside flap to you because I think that um, explains it a little bit better than I could. It says 1950s England. Five-year-old Gracie Scott lives with her mam and next door to her best friend Billy. An only child she has never known her da. When her, when her uncle Joe moves in his physical abuse of Gracie's mother starts almost immediately but when his attentions wander to Gracie an even more sinister pattern of behaviour begins. As Gracie grows older she finds solace and liberation in books poetry and her enduring friendship with Billy. Together they escape into the poetic fairy tale worlds of their imaginations. But will fairy tales be enough to save Gracie from Uncle Joe's psychopathic behaviour? And how far will it go? Then we have two books which were sent to me by review from Alma Books and first up is The Lost Book of the Grail by Charlie Lovett. This is an historical fiction book with a mystery at the heart of it about an English professor 
who goes on a quest to try and find a lost book of the grail and I literally don't know anything else about it from that but I thought that it sounded really interesting. I kind of love this type of book, it puts me in mind of sort of Dan Brownish type novels um, so I'm really looking forward to reading and reviewing this one. And then we have a classic children's book, Five Children and It by E. Nesbitt. This is about five children who find a sand fairy they call It and every day it will grant each of the children a wish which will last until sunset and obviously as with all these kinds of things they have fairly disastrous consequences so um, I'm really looking forward to rereading this I think that I'll probably read it to Meg and Eli um, but I just love this new design cover that they've got um, and this is just a classic children's book which I'm very much looking forward to rereading. Then I picked up The Secret Garden by Frances Hodgson Burnett and Black Beauty by Anna Seul. These are both uh, puffin hardback classics. It's a new style of cover that they're doing. I'm just very gradually um, collecting all of them. So I already have Peter Pan and now I have these two. Then I picked up The Knife of Never Letting Go, The Ask and the Answer, and Monsters of Men, which are all part of the Chaos Walking trilogy by Patrick Ness. And these are YA dystopian books, which are set in a world where everyone can hear everyone else's thoughts and our protagonist Todd comes across an area of silence and also a secret which has been hidden. So I don't know much more than that. And then these final four books are all books which I have bought recently but already read and I will leave in the description box down below a link to where each of the books can be found in my various wrap ups if you are interested in hearing more about them. So they are Molokai by Alan Brennett, Ink by Alice Broadway, The Orphan's Tale by Pam Genoff and Fire Damage by Kate Medina. So there you go, that is my most recent book haul. Thank you for watching. Do let me know if you've read any of the books that I hauled and what you thought of them. Please don't forget to give me the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more content and I will see you all soon.